here we go. This is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Doug. Today we're going to talk about sheep again because this is the time of year when we talk about sheep because all of our ewes are lambing. So let me straighten you up here so you can get a straight on view. So I'm hanging out in the hay barn, uh, which we also double as our sheep barn in the wintertime because that's where our water hydrant is for our gravity fed water system. And that way we can provide them with water and all their feed is right here. So it just cuts down on all the way over there back and forth stuff. That's our summer paddock. And then they have around the pond and then they have back in the woods. So we do rotational grazing for our sheep. So you guys might have caught it in a previous video. Uh, we mentioned about keeping an eye on the barometric pressure. So if you have a doe or a ewe about to lamb or kid, then you'll want to keep an eye on the barometric pressure. Because sure enough, a couple days ago, uh, it was like 50 degrees or something, upper 50s in the middle of the day. And then that night it dropped down to like six degrees or something <laughs> it was a huge uh temperature swing the barometric pressure changed and sure enough three of our ewes had their um lambs so we have um one mother who i'll introduce you here in a second had triplets the other one had one and the other one had two now the problem that we're having is usually the babies uh you know if she has three lambs sheep are not very good at bringing out uh three lambs and raising them up so you'll have um the three lambs with her and then a month from now or something you'll see that one of them will perish so we've actually contacted a neighbor who asked if we could uh, if we knew anyone who was going to have bottle lambs you know that they wanted to take care of they want to start raising sheep so we're going to go ahead and pass the torch off to our neighbor and she's going to raise two of the ones that we have i believe um, what happened was too um, when they were born because we weren't expecting them all to have babies all at once. Uh, we actually had everything open in here for them to do their thing. And then uh, they got confused because they were all spitting them out really quick. And so one mother is, is basically not accepting her lamb. And so um, it's gotten the colostrum and it's doing okay. But to, in order for it to thrive, we think it's best that it's going to be bottle fed. And so we're going to pass two of our lambs off to our neighbor and then she's going to get started with sheep. And so this will be a good project for her and uh, frees up a little time for us. Okay. So right now I'm going to show you guys also um, how you can make pins in a pinch. So what I had to do was basically make a maternity ward. So I'm going to show you guys how that looks right now and give you some ideas on how you can make some makeshift pins uh, for your does and use. Now there's mama number one. Uh, she's in her pen with her three. She doesn't like the chickens uh, messing around with her baby. She's very protective. She's doing a great job raising the three. Um, but we just know eventually as see there, what happens is the lambs are going to increase in their food consumption, not decrease. So she's able to handle them now. You know, they're eating, you know, a couple of ounces a day, but that's going to steadily go up and she won't be able to uh, keep up. And then one of those is going to suffer. So we'll, we'll take the smallest one from her and then pass it off uh, to be bottle fed by the neighbor. So what I've done over here is because we also have the seven that were born last year that are, are ready to, um, you know, be processed are separated. And then we also had to put Rambo over there. That's our ram right there. The reason why we do that is because ram, um, when, when the female births, she has a scent about her, and then that drives him crazy, and then he's chasing her around the whole time, and then, you know, trying to do his man stuff. <laughs> and uh, so it stresses her out, and then the babies get stressed out, and it only lasts for a little while, and then he leaves her alone. But so this time, I figured it'd be best if we just separated him totally, and we just put him on this side of the fence. So I put a fence in here, makeshift, to divide it up. They all have a run in right here. They can come in out of the weather, and then that's their paddock over there. So I have this one here, and then what I did was I just used straw bales. I put straw bales up here, and then I put one at the end to cover the hole, and then that's her section. And then I have another one here, and then you can see her, she's doing great. And there's her section. And then I put some more straw bales here and then I put some pallets behind it just to kind of make it a little stronger because I only put two pallets across here. So that helps cover that extra gap right there. And then I had an old cattle panel that I ran across here that you can see, right? And then there's the mom there with her two. And the one, um, it's just, 
not really doing as good as we like. If it gets bottle fed, it's going to be uh, super strong. So there is a great tip for you guys to make some temporary pins um, for your does or your ewes. And then I can take these out and then, because they're herd animals, they like to all be together. And then they'll be very happy and that'll be a good thing. So I wanted to show you that for sure. And remember that the ewes are going to double take their food because they are producing milk for the lambs. So you want to make sure that they have plenty of food uh, to nurse their lambs. So also, you know, you'll notice pretty much right off the first day or, you know, 24 to 36 hours, your lambs are going to actually start eating hay. They won't eat a lot of it, but they will start adding that into their diet as well as the teat. So they, you'll also see them if you give them oats, you'll see them nibble on some oats. So they're not... Um, really getting a lot from that but that just starts the process of getting their ruminant um, processes going well pilgrims that's it for this video <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys uh, the ingenuity of a homesteader is always good and I'll give you a few tips on you know those lambs that are coming out of the ewes and maybe your uh, kids that are coming out of the does and just give you some ideas you know you don't have to have all this permanent stuff up you can kind of make um, um, arrangements as you go along and normally we wouldn't worry about it like I said but we had all of them that same night and it caused a little bit of confusion with them so it just turned out to be a little easier and it gave us a little bit more peace of mind so we don't normally do this but it is something that on the fly um, anybody can do so hopefully you got a nugget in this video somewhere don't forget to check us out on Facebook Instagram and Twitter also we're gonna leave a link down below uh, we're giving away a Sun oven if you register for the webinar class and you are at it you also get a free ebook and there will be one Sun oven given away during the class the links down below make sure you check it out if you want to uh, be involved in something like that a lot of good information is going to be at the webinar about using the all-american sun oven and so springs right around the corner uh, and you guys are going to be wanting to use that to keep the heat out of the house just to be a little more energy efficient and take advantage of that also our t-shirts are available so make sure you get the hottest homestead t-shirt on youtube we'll see you on the next video thanks for watching our video you might want to check out these videos and if you want to become a homestead homie click the picture of us below we, we will, will see, see you tomorrow, tomorrow.